Revelation chapter 13 is the Bible's symbolic centerpiece of end times prophecy that we are now watching unfold in real time before our eyes in these last days just before the rapture of the church. It describes two very distinct, extremely dangerous beasts rising in the last days just prior to the rapture. Last time, we began to examine the first beast that John sees in his vision in verses 1 and 2, the beast rising from the sea. Let's pick up our study where we left off last time in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Starting in verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we lift up this study to you now as a sacrifice of praise, and we thank you for this opportunity to come into the throne room. Father, we ask you now to speak to us. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would anoint this study, and Lord, that you would teach us what you would have us know. And Father, we give you praise and glory and honor, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, last time we began to unpack what these scriptures teach us about this first beast that is rising from the sea. I'll include a link to that study in the description below. Here's what we've learned so far. We learned how this beast reflects the rising wickedness of fallen mankind and how its power is rooted in satanic evil. As we watch evil immorality gain more power and visibility in the world around us, we are seeing moral authority weaken and fade from view. This is the sinister paradox of the last days. The rising beast of the sea reflects the falling character of mankind, the moral decline of society. In other words, the rising beast of the sea is the satanic manifestation of increasing immorality in an evil world. As we watch this increasing immorality rise to prominence around us, the satanic power of this beast is fueled by the dangerous, destructive character of the unsaved that is on display today in the highly liberal, ultra-progressive agenda that is now attempting to overthrow our government and sweep our entire nation into perverse social behaviors and a Marxist regulatory state that discards all traditional conservative values. This rising moral confusion is the satanic inspiration behind many of the communist economic and political events that we now see happening in the world as this beast rises up out of the sea right before our eyes. We also saw that this beast has seven heads and ten horns with ten crowns upon its ten horns. The dragon, which represents Satan, also has seven heads and ten horns, which signifies that this first beast is birthed of the dragon because parent and child both have seven heads and ten horns. Now, why does the Bible go into such detail about the number of heads, the number of crowns, and the number of horns? Let's look first at the seven heads of this beast because they explain so much of what we now see happening around us. The Greek term for the heads here in verse 1 denotes authority, direction, guidance. So the seven heads here refer to seven authorities who are responsible for the guidance and direction of seven domains or regions. Numbers throughout the Bible indicate amounts or quantities in the natural realm but they also indicate character in the supernatural realm. 
The number seven here in verse one spiritually symbolizes a character of completion or spiritual perfection. In other words, the number seven characterizes spiritual authority that is rooted in a completely perfect life lived here on earth. So what does seven heads indicate about the character and authority of this beast? And how does this relate to everything that we see happening today? Think this through with me. The number seven points to spiritual authority rooted in a completely perfect life lived here on earth. And Jesus is the only human to ever live a completely perfect life in this world. This means the number seven signifies the complete, perfect authority that Jesus has over the earth. <clears throat> when a Christian is in union with God through Jesus, seven represents the spiritual stamp of God's complete guidance on their life through Jesus, his perfect direction for their life through the light of his Holy Spirit. Amen. So seven heads here typically characterize the perfect leadership of the Holy Spirit in daily living and his complete authority in spiritual warfare for Christians who are in union with God the Father through Jesus, his Son. But Christian character and moral living are the exact opposite of this immoral beast that we're seeing rise up in verse 1. Remember that this beast is birthed of the dragon. Its seven heads match the seven heads of its father, the devil. Jesus warns us about this in John chapter 8. Our Lord says, You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The immoral character of these authorities is the exact opposite of spiritually perfect authority and spiritually complete leadership. They are the exact opposite of what they are supposed to represent. They replace truth with lies. Instead of being faithful, they cheat. They say one thing, but do another. They use false impressions to deceive in every way, all the time, because there is no truth in them. Does this sound familiar? Think about it. The scriptures teach us in 1 John chapter 2 that in these last days, we have heard that the Antichrist will come. But even now, there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it's the last days. This is the lying, immoral spirit of Antichrist that we are now seeing rise up in so many elected and non-elected officials who are of their father, the devil. Let's get our minds around what we actually see happening right now. We are now watching highly liberal, immoral authorities speak lies and use false information to wrongly guide and misdirect the public. This is propaganda, and it is only the beginning of the strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that is used to brainwash and prepare people for the coming introduction of the Antichrist. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the scriptures say, And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Remember, this beast is rising. It's not yet fully exposed. That will happen right after we disappear with the rapture of the church, as explained again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The scriptures tell us that now you know what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That's what we're seeing right now happen around us. Only he who now letteth will let 
That's the Holy Spirit inside us, Christians, the church, the bride of Christ. Until he, the Holy Spirit, be taken out of the way, and then that wicked shall be revealed. Wicked has a capital W for a pronoun. That's the Antichrist. Now think this through with me for just a moment. Prior to the appearance of the Antichrist, in the meantime, we are literally watching more and more of the authorities of the seven heads begin to appear around us, using propaganda to construct a mindset of lies that will accept the Antichrist. As the seven heads rise toward full exposure, their propaganda will intensify and grow stronger. The delusion will become stronger. The brainwashing through propaganda that we now see in fake news, in social media, in cultural chaos, in our education system, and in our political institutions is only the beginning of the strong delusion being sent by Almighty God to separate the wheat from the tares just prior to the rapture. After we are gone and this beast rises to full exposure under the Antichrist, the strong delusion will escalate beyond imagination. Propaganda used for brainwashing will soon be replaced with digital technologies and neural networks that are used for mind control. We're going to examine this a little bit later on in this study, if the Lord tarries. Can you see why it is so important for us to be spreading the gospel in these last hours? This is precisely why the Lord chose you and me to live in such a time as this. You can hear Jesus shouting to us from John chapter 4, verse 35. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, ready to the harvest. Amen. Now this ties into another sign that the rapture of the church could happen at any moment. The escalation of spiritual warfare that we see happening as the seven heads of this beast rise into prominence and we begin to witness organized rebellion against godly values. This is emphasized at the end of verse one in our text. Look again. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. These seven heads share a single name. They all possess a common nature that binds them together as a system, an organization that is in union. Upon each head is the name of blasphemy. Blasphemy is open disrespect and rebellion toward God. And here in verse one, this blasphemy is multiplied sevenfold. This sevenfold blasphemy, birth of their father, the devil, binds these authorities together as a dangerous, destructive system that is perfectly disrespectful and perfectly rebellious toward God. Think about all of the arrogant officials we now see that openly disrespect and even oppose the law that they are supposed to uphold. These are rebellious authorities who disrespect all authority. They use profanity, they permit lewd behavior, and they are in open rebellion against churches being allowed to operate, against believers being allowed to worship God. This is evil on display that we've never seen before. They are in open rebellion against God. And 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 explains that this sort of rebellion that we see rising around us today is nothing less than witchcraft. Let that sink in for a moment, because we're going to come back to it in just a bit. These authorities are openly embracing lawlessness and confusion. They are openly promoting and supporting the spiritual darkness of Satan. This is very important to recognize, because the spiritual darkness of Satan, the spirit of Antichrist, opposes the light of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, the Bride of Christ, the Church. As this beast system rises up, 
We are watching spiritual warfare take center stage between the darkness of the Antichrist spirit versus the sevenfold light of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ that is found in Isaiah chapter 11 and Revelation chapters 1 and 5. The disrespect of the law that we now see by public officials has taken on a new dimension in direct opposition to the Holy Spirit of God. As this beast rises, as more authorities and more people break laws, particularly the Ten Commandments, spiritual warfare will continue to ramp up until we as the church are raptured out of here and the Holy Spirit leaves this realm. At that point, all hell will literally break loose upon this fallen world. And rather than following the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, people who are left behind will be consumed with demonic foolishness. Incapable of understanding the difference between right and wrong, confusion will fill their minds. The strong delusion of propaganda and mind control will drown them in satanic deception. Without the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, civilization as we know it will cease to exist dumbed down into ignorant slavery under control of the Antichrist. As this beast rises up into full exposure, the world will grow darker and darker. Don't we already see all of this happening around us? You can feel it. You can see it. So the seven heads here expose this rising beast of the sea to be spirits of Antichrist that are organized in total independence from God rising in power through lawlessness and rebellion. This Antichrist system has the motivation and power of Satan behind it. Satan is the source of all rebellion against God. Any Antichrist which comes from Satan will look like Satan, carry the same anti-Christian spirit of Satan, and be used for the same purpose as Satan. These spirits of Antichrist have been rising for a period of time, and their organization is now coming to maturity as a massive entity being formed by Satan. Instead of following Jesus Christ as its perfect authority, this sinister organization will soon follow a person who is the Antichrist, an enemy that is the perfect opposite of Jesus Christ. That brings us back to the horns and the crowns here in verse 1. Just as the heads denote leadership, the horns upon the heads denote power, as in might or strength. The crowns upon the horns also denote authority, as in privilege or right. John also emphasizes in verse 2 that the dragon, which is Satan, personally gives this beast its power and his seat. Seed here points to position, to the role of authority. Now, up to this point, the scriptures have shown us how all of the acts of immorality and pure evil that we see rising up around us are not only demonically inspired, they are satanically organized through spirits of Antichrist, working in union as a dangerous, destructive system. Now, the scriptures are explaining to us that Satan has personally chosen certain spirits of Antichrist and positioned them in authority over this evil rising system. These are privileged people in high places, wealthy elites who Satan personally pours his demonic power into and his influence and wealth upon behind the scenes, hidden from public view. Now, let's get our mind around this. The scriptures are describing privileged, wealthy elites who are witches of the highest Luciferian order, perversely governed by their carnal law of ravenous ambition for power and control. In the public arena, for all to see, they are investment bankers, philanthropists, members of royal families, and business executives at the pinnacle of privilege and wealth. But behind the scenes, they are witches involved in highly satanic rituals to gain more power and influence, more wealth. To those who run in their elite circles, 
They are secretly testimonies to the law of Satan himself, responsible for one thing, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. By the way, that was written by Aleister Crowley, a very high level witch. This witchcraft sounds like something out of a horror movie, but as we will see later on in our study, it is very real. Think about what is happening here. In Matthew chapter six, Jesus tells us to seek first the kingdom of God in heaven. He's telling us to seek the spirit-filled life of abundance that's found only in relationship with him. He'll take care of all our needs. In contrast, Satan, the father of lies, drives the souls of these wealthy, privileged elites to relish more and more power. They are consumed with more and more control over this world. They absolutely crave the worldly abundance found in the power, wealth, and perversion of First John chapter 2, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So the Ten Crowns speak of wealthy elite witches who, governed by carnal law, not only possess satanic privileges of demonic power, wealth, and perversion, they crave more. They demand the ultimate privileges, royal privileges. In other words, these elites want all power, all wealth, all perversion for themselves. Their lives are consumed with the spirit of Antichrist that demands one thing, control. Control of all things, of everything, of everybody. Until now, these privileged wealthy elites have not been able to openly accomplish this control because we the people, especially Christians not yet taken in the rapture, have rejected and fought them. But they have excelled in deception, in doing things behind the scenes to build their system. Now, as the rapture approaches, they are becoming more arrogant, more blatant, and much more open to the public with their sinister plans, which we now see being rolled out in many economic and political activities that are rising to the forefront on a global scale. In our next study, we are going to examine some of these economic and political activities, the construction of this antichrist system, and how all of this satanically connects together to create this demonic beast rising from the sea. For now, let's close in prayer. Lord, again, we thank you so much for this study. Father, we thank you for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, we ask you to give us opportunities to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to a dying world. And we pray to you, Lord, come quickly. Take us out of here. Father, we love you and we praise you and we glorify you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen.